Ladies and gentlemen, welcome back to my channel. My name is Jerove, the only Jerove in the world. Google it, and in today's video, I interviewed one of my clients who flew into London because I wanna make sure that I can help him share his story, and since we're gonna be helping him grow his personal brand, monetize it, and you'll see throughout the actual interview, he runs a pretty big educational company. He's worked with some huge, huge names, so make sure you stay throughout this video and stay till the end. Now, in terms of videos like this, I am gonna be shooting some interview podcast style videos, but I'm not gonna to commit to starting a podcast, which is why I don't have a podcast name. I'm gonna leave the podcasting to the greats. I know there's a lot that goes on behind it, and amazing podcasts take a lot of work, and it's a full-time career. So, in the meantime, enjoy this video, and I hope you have a beautiful rest of your day. Ladies and gentlemen, welcome back to my channel. My name is Jerove, the only Jerove in the world. Google it, and I'm here today with Antonio and Julian. So thank you so much for flying in today. Um, Julian's actually a client of mine, and we're gonna you know, explore Julian's story, the businesses he runs, the lessons he's learned, because he has an amazing entrepreneurial journey. And I'm sure that you know, you'll be able to inspire the people watching so that they can also save their time, their years, and don't have to go down, you know, some of the experiences that, you know, the the roadblocks that you've been through. So, um, yeah, let's get right into it. So, Julian, uh, welcome, and would love to hear a quick little introduction as to, you know, um, who you are, what kind of businesses you run, and, yeah, we'll take it from there. Yeah, so I'm Julian. I'm at the moment living in Frankfurt, and I'm currently mainly working on Skills Faster, um, which is um, an online education platform. We are working with, it's been actually founded by Greg Williams. He's a very famous photographer also here from, from London. Um, he's doing, you know, all the big festivals, Oscars, Cannes Film Festivals. Um, he's been a bon, the Bond photographer for 20 years. And we have done a photography course that was very successful we have later then made a professional course as well and then expanded to a fitness course with the personal trainer of James Bond, Simon Watterson, or the personal trainer of Daniel Craig, uh, Simon Watterson. And since Greg was very happy with how Skills Faster went, I'm now in the position to make Skills Faster grow with other talents. We're currently producing the next course, which will be a makeup course. And yeah, that's what I'm working on. I'm gonna meet Greg tomorrow. That's also why I'm here in London. And yeah, that's that's my main thing and where my full focus is at the moment. Sounds great and very humble introduction because Julian is a great entrepreneur, well-rounded. We're gonna be exploring the several businesses he um, has, you know, been able to work with this, you know, whole entrepreneurial journey that you've been on. And yeah, that's the goal uh, for today for me and Antonio to really get those value gems out of you and spread the good vibes. So Antonio, let's take it away. 100%. So I mean, best place to start always to give a bit of context. So I feel like with Skills Faster is already more than a reason to be able to tune in and listen to you and have the audience connect. But I'd love to know or for you to share a bit about what's gotten you here so far, right? So what's the the context behind uh, the person that people are listening to and yeah, like what are some of the key traits and things that have happened during your life to help understand where you're at now? So for me, honestly, it started very early. My dad always was an entrepreneur. My mom was entrepreneurial. And I remember even when I was 14, I got books, you know, uh, that talk about entrepreneurs. I was like cap captains of capital and uh, you know how to win friends and influence people by Dave, uh, by Carnegie, and then also the normal educational system. It was just, let's say, not for me. I I really had struggles. I got kicked out of twice, <laughs> as as you know, a lot of entrepreneurs. I think a lot of, some of them had a similar story on your on your podcast. And the sad thing, the sad thing for me about that is that I'm actually a very curious person. Like I'm super interested in a lot of topics, also non-entrepreneurial topics, you know, science and, and all that stuff. But, you know, the speed 
in which school is teaching you stuff is dependent on the least performant person. And, you know, for every subject, there might be a different one. And so for some people, it just gets boring. And so when I got kicked out, you know, my only chance was to do something on my own, which didn't work right from the start. Um, as I've work, been working in corporate for five years, but I always tried stuff and I had successes very early, even when I was like 16, 17. And it was a, it was an up and down. And then when I when I was working in corporate for five years, I think I was 24 or 25. Um, I was luckily in the position to leave my hometown to travel the world. And we built up um, one of the biggest poker schools, online poker schools, Raise Your Edge. And that just excelled my progress as an entrepreneur, but also, and even more important, as a human being. Because when you travel, you just like see so many cultures. You see a lot of things that seem like just given for you are just completely different in other cities. It's really there's so big, huge cultural differences. And that made me see a lot of things more calm. And also having all those human interactions, I feel like made me better as an entrepreneur. And that's also how I, how I met Greg, actually, who I met on the, on the plane from uh, London to LA. And he was complimenting my shoes. He's like also like a very socialite kind of guy. He he knows he, he he knows how to you know handle celebrities and just a nice, friendly, uh, charming guy. What shoes were you wearing? Huh? What shoes were you wearing? I think it was like some limited edition off white. Something you know what you wear when you when you land in LAX. Yeah. <laughs> and we chatted a little bit, and we chatted a little bit. And I told him we're making this on uh, poker school, and he was very interested in education as well. And then we just connected on Instagram, and there was like just you know a couple of <laughs> likes back and forth. And then like a year later, I was in London, and I asked him, "Hey, you want to grab a coffee?" And he was like, "Sure, come to my studio." And he was already very decided on making an online course. Actually, like I came in there, I was just wanted to chat, and he was like, "Yeah, we actually want to make this course," and and. I was not even in a position to do it, but I wanted to help just genuinely. And that's definitely one lesson from, from my life so far is, you know, if there are good people around you, just focus on giving them value. This just, you know, I feel like there's this almost like hidden language of successful people that you always try to be even or like even more giving than taking. And then those people will usually try to give it back to you. And I see so many people that, don't speak that language and they just try to do stuff for their own benefit and those are usually the people that stay down or stay at their level so at this point i was just like okay i cannot do the course at the moment i cannot help help him because i'm doing another uh, project right now but i was like what can i do for him and i basically wrote him down how i would do it if if I um, would do it, like, and it was like a long document where where I wrote on all kind of you know marketing strategies that I would use, how I've done it at the poker school, and then I gave it to him just for free, and I was like, yeah, you can go to like a marketing guy and tell him like that, that's that's what you should do, but the way he was, he that actually made it made him to to want me more to work with him, and then it it went for a little bit, and then this you know successful relationship started. And yeah, I'm, I'm very happy. And also I have to say at this point, like Greg has been a massive inspiration for me as well. He's like a couple of years older than me. He has insane work ethics. They all, all people that are working for him are like, like so good in what they do, like the director, the designer, management. And um, there, it's not luck that he is where he is. And I've learned a lot from them as well. Um, so I just wanted to to shout that out here. Um, that ha helped me to brokers further. Hundred percent. No, the what you said about the secret language of successful people, I think, is super important to pick up on as well. Um, especially because this is something I wanted to ask you about. So, guys, I hope you're enjoying the video so far. I just have to interrupt this section 
because I want to give a word from our sponsor, me. So, if you don't know already, I run Scale with Content Dio, which is a personal branding and content creation agency. So, if you need help scaling your personal brand, monetizing it, and you just need beautiful looking pieces of content, because in today's digital age, your personal brand and the way in which you look on social media is so, so important. So, make sure you check out our website in the link below. And if you are interested in coaching, make sure you follow me on Instagram, just watch my content and DM me coaching and I'll get back to you. Enjoy the rest of this video. In our last conversation, you at least gave me the impression that like naturally you're quite introverted. Yeah. But through your life experiences, through your travels and then also like the party side of things and events <laughs> that you posted as well, yeah. you've kind of managed to build up that... Um, <laughs> I mean, I'd almost call it like an ability to develop social capital, right? To be able to actually understand how people work better, how their minds work, how to connect with people, not in a selfish or robotic way, but in a genuine connection way. Um, and I'd love to know from you kind of like the approaches that you've taken to actually meeting cool people and to connecting on a deeper level with people who are doing cool things. Uh, honestly, there's this fun little thing that a lot of highly successful entrepreneurs someone has a have a background in nightlife i think mark cuban was a barkeeper and the guy that founded alibaba wa was also working in, in nightlife and i think that the, the one good thing about nightlife is that the interactions that you have is just like you have like tremendously more interactions than you would have in any other situation so if you you know, just assume you never go out or you never go to social events, then the number of like interactions you have is just tremendously lower than when you go out. And um, I think for me, you, you, you said it, I was hosting events. It was one entrepreneurial uh, path of me as well. I was hosting events for four, four or five years. And my job basically was to convince people to come to my party. And I had to talk to everyone. Um, I had to be nice to the people and I had a lot of interactions and that really helped me to build social, what, what people would call social skills. And you're 100% right. When I was in school, I was like, you know, bu bullied. <laughs> and like, really, I was wearing classes. I was a nerd. I was just sitting computer. I was not like, I was so... I was so annoying in school that even the other students complained at the teacher. You know, normally, you know, normally when when somebody just makes jokes all the time, the teacher is angry and the other students just laugh because it's funny, right? But I was doing so much and it was so uncalibrated that even the other students were like, hey, actually, Julian is disturbing this, this lesson so much, I can't learn. And, and it was really bad. Um, and then luckily I met um, at one startup, I met um, this one mentor of mine that I work with till today, Cumbus, and he has helped me to make the first steps and he has also made the parties with me and he had like this big brother kind of role. And I think the one thing that draws through it all was really just the genuine interest of of providing value, being, you know, of, of good work, being, you know, curious and just bringing, you know, I, I feel it's been more important than ever, like just bringing in good virtues. And, and then there will appear characters in your life that will help you to to go the path that you you know that to go your path that you want to go. Hundred percent. Yeah. Virtues, values, principles. If you can apply all these things, like in the end of the day, I feel like things tend to work out for the people that do. Yeah. Um. One hundred percent. On a slightly different side, though, uh, you mentioned the online courses. Yeah. And you mentioned the the industry you're in. And then you mentioned the marketing plan that you laid out for Greg. Yeah. And this is something that I picked out also in our last talk because I know that some people have called you the funnel god. <laughs> so what does that what does that mean? Like how did you a how did you build up the skills to the point that someone would refer to you as like this high up in terms of building funnels? And what are those skills per se? So I think that was just the curiosity and the never-ending drive of improving something so that even started at the poker poker school funny thing i just want to side note that the poker the poker 
school was actually also I was playing poker and I was hosting parties and I wanted to get better poker and I knew there's just a certain level you can get to on your own so I texted the best, best poker player I knew hey I know I, I've seen your website your website sucks I can make you a better website if you coach me and then I sent him also like a big document of, of what, what is wrong with his website and he liked it so much he was like you know fuck playing poker just make this company with me you know you can have like shares um and so there was a the similar story i just wanted to side note that and then to come back to your to your last question um i think what really and i i still keep learning to that day it was just like you know when you do performance marketing now we get a little bit practical when you do performance marketing you can see very clearly how much you get out of it and then to me and it's for life and it's also for for online business as well it usually is you you just try to improve step by step and then those things accumulate together so if you do one percent you improve one percent there and then later you improve one percent again that one percent is already one percent more than one percent before and that you know adds up and adds up and usually it's not just one percent but five percent or ten percent and Whenever I f had something that I didn't fully grasp or fully understand, I was like, you know, what's going on? And I, I've seen that, I see it even to today, very big companies make mistakes when they have specific forms. So, for example, I, I mean, most people, a lot of people in the industry have read that by now, but the company field. So, airlines used to have a company field in their uh, checkout forms so people can get a business uh, you know, a VAT invoice. Um, but they later changed it to after the checkout because one more field is creating more friction and people drop off. And so all, or a big part of what you do in the in, in the funnel optimization is to reduce friction. Um, and then there's the other thing, the loading time. A lot of people don't worry about the loading time. There's so much stuff that sets you up website. It's very easy, like even click funnels and stuff. And it's super fine to start, but you can see how I get passionate about it. But like if you want to have high performance stuff, you know, those 100 milliseconds to 500 milliseconds that you can improve your loading time, it makes you a lot of money. It's like, it's just like just the truth. And where we often, I've seen also when I worked as an agency for, for a bit, I've seen people doing so much stuff around the original thing um, that they like, they don't see the tree because of the forest. I'm not sure if that's an English <laughs> uh, saying as well. But honestly, for if, if your business is like a performance-based business, you have to see your funnel like a racing car um, where you really try to get out, like like Formula One, you just try to get out that one more second, Fine. millisecond, yeah, you, you, you find every tweak and then also you go through you, your customer journey and all these, like it's very tough for me to say something like generally, but that's like, my, that's what I'm doing. Like I'm looking at it for like fr right from the start, they see me first time on, or is it the, the see us for the first time on our ad and then you know that right when 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 you edit videos it's the same thing right you you worry about the three first seconds or the the one for the one the first second right the hook, the hook yeah and 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 then from the hook you know you go go to you what's the first is attention then it's interest then it's authority you know then it's desire and then uh call to action and you go through that, then they come to the website, you know what they've seen, and then you, you again tell them the whole story, depending on what you're selling them, you have to lead them through, and then there is supposed to be no friction. And yeah, all these things then, you know, that's what I'm worried about when I'm, when I'm working, and that's where I think I, I've, been, I've been quite good over the years. And where I usually can help even other entrepreneurs <laughs> when they have a funnel. Yeah, that was a lot of value bombs. And I wanted to delve into the marketing side of your expertise because the reason why we're here today is because of Van Dennis. So shout out to Van. Um, he's running an eight-figure agency and you have been able to scale companies, for example, the poker school to seven, eight figures. And you've done that with several companies as well. What would you say is something that you've seen like as the common denominator in allowing you to help scale these other companies to multi-million dollars um so i i think it it the common denominator is actually what i what i just said is to focus you really just need 
like it's it's almost like you need one ad, one funnel, one product that you can scale, right? That is just perfect. That is like perfect for the for the user. That is makes people happy and all that stuff. And even when I look at other companies, very often it's just like one specific thing that works really, really well. And when I would think about what holds a lot of companies back is, you know, when they try too many things at once and they lose the focus. You you the, the payout when you do one thing perfectly is just tremendously higher than when you do like 10 things at 90 percent it's just like worse to to get out at 10 more 10 percent more um so i think yeah the common denominator is and then and then i mean that doesn't mean that if you feel like you're at 90 percent and you're not making profit then maybe your product just sucks or, or like the plan just sucks and you should change it it doesn't mean you have to stick to one thing but you have to make one thing work and one thing work really well and then focus on that for a while and then maybe you know can can expand into other into other section. I think that's that's a common denominator. That's also what I've seen from 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 a lot of other uh, companies. What what works, and I mean it's it's also not that new. Lo- it's it's not like unique um, advice, but that's just one hundred percent like my experience. Yeah, and I think even to continue on the marketing topic, um, you mentioned you ran an agency for a while. Yeah. So I know a lot of Jerov's audience will be agency owners and people with interest in the agency space. Yeah. Um. Right. So, I mean, obviously, that's not the thing that you're doing right now. Mm-hmm. But when you look back at it and the successes, the failures you had, like, what would you say were, like, the things you did well? And, again, if you were to go back at it and make that business model work? I mean, I think we can apply that 100% on, on agency mm-hmm. owners. I think... First thing is rather of focusing into five different services, just provide one service. And then, you know, you have the one specific sales funnel, you know, you run your ads and then there's either qualifying call or no qualifying call. And then, you know, there's a sales call and you almost, almost tell the same thing and you, you bring your, and if the, the thing is, if you really focus, you don't need every client, right? So, so you don't even try to sell them that hard. And if they, if you try to, like, you know, the guy that chases two rabbits catches none, right? So if you try, if, if there's like one client and you're not really a good fit for him, then, you know, don't chase him. Just go through his thing. And, and if you if you do that all the time and you actually make your clients happy, that's, I think, the, the, the easiest path to success. So, so I don't know. If you do websites, just sell websites. If you do editing, just sell editing. If you do social media marketing, just sell social media marketing. And... And then also try to make a process for everything. Like like everything has to process has to have a process. The sales call has to be a process. Because only if you have a process and if you have measurements of what you do, you can optimize that. You can then see, oh actually if I do that opening. So so my dad has also this uh, quite quite successful company selling radio ads. Yeah, it's 2023 and he's selling radio ads. And I know that they are working even on a tonality. Like they almost have a very similar sales script all the time, but they work on, when they record it, they work on a tonality. Like the words are already fixed and they work on tonality of, of individual words of a sales call. And he know that sales call has been used so often that they can improve these kind of things. And if you use five different, like, or if you just do it like on the go or anything, then you will never be able to teach it to other people and you will also not be able to improve it that easily. So, yeah, just processing, process those specific things and focus. That will, that will be my advice or to agency owners. Um, and honestly, I feel like if you if you have those two things down, it's almost like like easy as an agency owner nowadays. It's uh, agency wonderland, I feel like. There's so many people that want to bring out their product, that want to, you know, people that made a lot of money in corporate and they want to get out and they want, you know, I don't know, run their own e-commerce business and they don't have the knowledge. And if you're just very good in one thing, you can just sell the shit out of that. (laughs) Yeah, definitely. Uh, I wanted to transition the conversation into the work that you've done specifically because I wouldn't even class you as an agency owner because we've talked about this on our calls 
you're a growth agent and right now that in today's you know like agency space that's like the growth partner model so could you describe kind of like your model because it seems like you know you're you're taking equity in big companies right now you scale them up what would you describe your specific model and yourself as in this online entrepreneurial space so right now i said it before i'm really uh tuned in on skills faster so it's more like a traditional startup like ceo role but the last the companies that brought me to where i am was as you said the cross model and i was just in the fortunate situation where i had the freedom or i didn't feel like i would want to you know work for a fixed fees i was just always very driven about you know bringing in the value making the companies grow and then get paid out um based on the success performance results yeah so all of those deals if I wouldn't have made the companies grow, I wouldn't made a single dime. Like I had no fixed fee, neither on Skills Faster nor on the poker company, um, except, you know, of course for corporate, but <laughs> um, also at the events not. And when, when I worked with Rene, there was nothing. So I had, um, and that just, you know, made me feel alive. Like that was like, I'm a, I would say I'm a little bit risk adverse compared to some other entrepreneurs. So I was never, I was not running my own business completely alone, but this gave me that playground to apply what I know in, you know, situations where I didn't risk my own money. And so I first, my, my, my standard model, and you could, you could apply that also if you have an agency, was first I was focusing on just giving a lot of value, showing them that I know what I'm talking about, that was, for example, that two, two documents that were showing that's how I would do it. And then I was not even, I was not, and, and it was very similar even with Poker Detox I worked recently with. Uh, same story again. And then I was not even trying to sell me. I was not saying, hey, I want to work for you or whatever. But usually if the document is good enough, they're going to come back to you and like, hey, do you want to, you know, you want to work. So if you would want to do an agency that does exactly the thing, that could be like your, your kind of, say a speech you just if that's a good company that is big enough for a gross model that's interesting for you you just look at their biggest bottleneck you write out a document of how you would change it if you actually feel like you have the skills to that you send them the document and they will be very grateful and they if if, if they if it's good enough they will ask you hey do you need work and then you say hey i don't really looking for work right now um uh, but you know what is it you know and then they start to 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 explain their company to you. You get more details. You can see if it's a fit. And and then if it's a fit, you can tell them like uh, the only way it would work for me is like a cross model. Like I'm I'm just not interested in in having a fixed fee. I'm interested in having a partnership um, that would also guarantee you that I'm would be fully aligned with all your interests interests. So I would be fully aligned. And then, I mean, I personally, even most of the deals were above baseline profits. So if the company wouldn't grow, I wouldn't make anything. So that's also quite easy to sell. It's also very value driven. And sometimes I have to say though, things are out of your control. So I'm not saying this gross model is superior to all the other models out there. It might be if you, I don't know, produce websites and you have stuff like that, maybe like you just like sell uh, websites, uh, 100 websites a month, 300 websites a month. It's better than to, you know, make a gross model with each of them. But it's one model that works as well. It's especially interesting if if it's quite unique companies, you know. Those companies I've worked with went quite unique and they were challenges. challenges. And I really liked about that, you know, I've read a couple of articles about it. You shouldn't just choose your business ventures or what you do based on how much money you can make you should also think about how happy it makes you right and for me it makes me really happy or it makes me really feel alive when i have challenges so i really hate doing stuff that i can let other persons people do i really hate doing repetitive stuff so for me i just want those challenges and so that's something you should be very aware of also and 
yeah, just take that into account if you if you build your model. I would I would guess. Sounds good. You mentioned you built you know several companies up from the ground to you know multiple seven and eight figures. Could you talk about some companies that you've taken from like before working with you and you know where you scale them up to i mean not 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 all the credit goes to me i've always worked with other people that i also picked that was very very great um business people as well that have been my teachers and my challenging partners so i don't want to take credit for all of that but raise your edge has become a very big uh company when we started we were at um i think thirty two thousand dollars in one and a half years and then over the next 18 months uh, we scaled up to i think five million in revenue as an online poker school we we basically took over the whole twitch market um we produced a couple of new courses it was also an amazing journey to be in i think poker is also for life a big a big um benefit to to have to to go to I think po poker can teach a lot of lessons that are also apply in life because one thing that is hugely important, if not like critical or necessary in poker is that you stay unfazed in bad luck. You know, you can, for example, if you play a tournament, you can play a tournament for nine hours online, you do everything right, and then some sucker that does everything wrong is just winning and you wasted nine hours, it's 4 a.m. in the morning, and you didn't make a dime, you lost. And you did everything right. Or you did everything right for nine hours and then you make a mistake uh, 50 minutes later and then you're super angry with yourself. But none of those things should fear the next decision you make, right? So you really have to train these, that resilience. Um, and in life it's the same, you know. It's not, most things are not linear. You can put in a lot of work and you can you might not get a result. You can be very lucky. But with poker, you work on small edges. So you just try to play a little bit better than the others. And then over time, you will make more. You will make money. And it's very much uh, an existing job. There are tons of uh, professional poker players that make their living with playing poker. And they just, on average, make better decisions. But when they play one hand or 100 hands or 1,000 hands even... You wouldn't even notice on the results who are the professional poker players, but it's over a long sample. And it's the same with all the decisions we do in life, right? Um, it's just, we just try to make a little bit better decisions each day. Bad luck or unlucky accidents happen, and we just need to keep going on and make the best decisions from there on. Absolutely. No, I couldn't agree more. And one thing that I'm curious about as well, because you kept, you kept mentioning skills. Right. And even now, Skills Faster is the name of the company and you're growing that. But for someone who's starting out, for someone who feels like they don't have these skills to provide this level of value, how did you go about doing it? Or even better, how would you recommend someone nowadays would go about actually learning skills that they can implement and offer others? I mean, I'm so happy that you asked me that question. That's actually what I really wanted to talk about. Uh, that's also be what I was thinking about a lot because when I met that leap or that jump, I lost a little bit of connection to my old friends. I was all, all, also always hoping that more of my friends that I know knew for a long time would join me. And I'm always looking around and look also what is holding people back. And I think honestly, the most important thing nowadays is to get rid of that constant addictions that are out there like all that stuff like social media vaping um you know your phone ringing all the time notifications chatting and i don't know drinking and all that stuff like i feel like most of the people are just on fucking drugs like if you call all that drugs like all the time like they not a lot of people are not even able to learn something or to actually do something. You know, we as a society are so successful that we can take like millions of people that are not working really, you know. They are not really providing value, not really, you know. We just, they just somehow, you, you sit, sit, sit them and uh, you place them into an office and they work for, for four hours, they, they sit there for 40 hours and 
it's enough though it, it's enough because we, we we're just striving as 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 a, as a society and so i think for everybody who has more goals and aspirations i think the first thing is to get rid of as many of those bad habits as possible social media sugar even caffeine can be a thing vaping all that stuff and till you actually like to learn to enjoy working again and learning you know once all that stuff is gone gone you can just like sit into a dark room for for one day the next day you you will laugh to to make the dishes right it's and it's really i even see it with myself you know none of us is perfect and it's it's a cycle sometimes you get a little bit back you know you you want to do some i don't know i keep deleting tiktok again and then I, there's something i want to see and i install it again and suddenly I, i'm in the in the hole again in the scrolling hole again and then i delete it again and it's a constant fight and i can see even at myself i've seen myself when i was fully in those things and how unproductive i am and it's not like i'm 50% more productive if I don't use social media or 50% more productive if I don't eat bad food. And it's like another dimension, you know. It's it's not just more productive, it's also more clarity. It's more motivation, more aspirations. It's just like more everything. And it's just like such a big difference. So for me now, I allow myself to do a little bit of that stuff in the evening, but I try to really focus in the morning. So my, you know, morning routine inspired by the, the, the Uberman podcast now is I'm going out uh, uh, for a little walk in the morning for the sunlight. I try to move my first coffee into like 60, 90 minutes in. So I won't have an afternoon crash. I fast as, as you do, you roll in the morning. So my body is not really getting dopamine from a lot of things in the morning, except from work. So then I work, And then I go to the gym and then in the evening I, you know, I allow myself to do indulge into a little bit of uh, guilty pleasures because I also want to, you know, my brain to, to dump down a little bit. So I'm going to be able to, to rest properly and get a good night's sleep. And when I see when I see other people, I see very little people that actually fail doing the stuff they want to do. I see most people failing before they even start, before they even do anything because it's just like they keep moving it, they keep moving it, and they don't even realize how day by day goes while they're sucked in into, you know, whatever distraction they're into at the moment. Mm -hmm. That's 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 really my biggest biggest advice. And and you will know you're out of it if you are just curious to learn and curious to work and motivated to work. And then all, I feel like it will take a bit, but this is like you already had 90 95 percent of the time yeah dopamine is a very powerful thing to you know balance and make sure you don't fry your dopamine receptors right yeah and and i actually want to transition the conversation into you know you weren't always a digital nomad because um for those that don't know uh, julian has traveled a lot uh, there was a period of your life where You were living out of two Ramoa suitcases, right? Yeah. And you've met amazing people. You've been having dinners with people like Gary V and stuff like that. But you weren't always around these high-level people like, for example, Gary V, Van, Rene Lacard, and all the other um, people which we can talk about shortly. Uh, but I wanted to give you the opportunity to talk about your humble beginnings, right? You weren't always working with these high-level people. Um, so first, let's talk about what you had to do to survive back then and also the importance of environment because it's so important to protect your energy your time is the most valuable asset that you have and most importantly the people that you always surround yourself with and right now you're always surrounded with high level people and it's not necessarily people in your local vicinity it's people that are online and from different countries around the world so shout out to social media and mm. the internet for that but yeah let's let's start off with the beginnings and transition to your environment the people you hang around with okay uh yeah so to be honest i didn't have to do anything to survive i'm you know from like w what what you would call like a middle class family okay but somehow through the parties i have been 
I met a lot of people that were coming from richer families, you know, like when when you do parties and, uh, you know, you met like w what they call the rich kids and that always, uh, you know, motivated me or pushed me to progress further. And yeah, my, my, my first job, and I think that was where you're hinting at, was at McDonald's yeah. for, for six, six or seven euros per hour um, when, when I was 16. Um, I then, it was just for a couple of months, I then got into a startup, which was like, that was amazing for me. It was an internship, 150 bucks a month. Um, but it was, it, it really showed me what I want to do. I was like, I want to stay in that tech, you know, marketing kind of thing. Um, there also met the, the guy for, for uh, I've done the parties with Cumbus and yeah and you were then talking about um, the environment um, and I have then actually when, when we got successful with the poker school I was in a little bit of a, a dilemma where I was like okay you know I'm <laughs> I'm just please excuse me for for putting it out so so blatantly but like I was I was young making a lot of money and like but I didn't have any friends that were like similar right and I was like you know it's 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 also very lonely right it's very lonely I was traveling the world I was not any I was I was not really finding peers and even Rene I met Rene actually before he was like a big social media brand he was working for Ty Lopez back at the day and I was just um seeing that Ty Lopez posted a couple of young people working for him, they were just in the same industry. I didn't think they were like super rich, but, I, but I knew back when he was like, here, my garage. Exactly. Exactly. Yeah, yeah, like it was, was everywhere. <laughs> I was in Beverly Hills and I was then texting all of those five guys. And Renee was the only one that responded to me. And I, we went out for dinner and that's how I met Renee. And through Renee, I met Van and through Van, I met you, you know? So sometimes it's really just like reaching out, from a genuine standpoint, if you feel like there's somebody missing in your life and there's some peer group missing in your life, then maybe you can literally like just DM somebody and say, hey, <laughs> like I was like, hey, I've seen you working for Ty. Uh, I'm in Beverly Hills. Do you want to meet up? Then your social media is somehow showing what you do. And then like, sure, let's meet up. And and, and it can be easy like that. And the, the nightlife experience has given me the context or not the context, but has taught me how to properly word those kind of things so it doesn't come off as, you know. You should also always be very aware of where you stand, where the other person stands. So if you don't know that, you cannot just like text, I don't know who, Gary Vee or, or like any famous person, hey, you want to hang out, right? <laughs> you, you have to find people that are at your level but that have the same motivation, interest, maybe a little bit above, a little bit below, so, something like that. You and and those people you can you can DM and you can connect with, and there value as well. Yeah, and online there are people on all kind of levels, and then also you can think of providing value. If you provide value, you can you can aim a little bit higher, right? And I think this is actually a really powerful tool that I have not even used as much as I should to, because honestly, after after hosting events for five years, I got a little bit uh, si sick of socializing. So I was not really motivated. I'm still not really super motivated to socialize, but it's definitely a very valuable tool, like, like to reach out to people that share similar interests, that are on the same path as you. Like, it's huge. You can even create your own groups even better. You know, if you're the host, you create your own groups of like, hey, I'm just creating a group of hungry entrepreneurs, join in, that's huge. Or join a community that's like helping helping tons mm -hmm. yeah, especially i mean one word of advice i'd say is like people will read your dms but if you don't make the message interesting like you won't get an answer yeah um so yeah being able to and also what you mentioned like being able to use your profile right yeah right if, if your profile i wanted to say if your profile is good enough you can afford to just go with an easy low interest message so there's also, of course, always a little bit of status game in there. You can afford to 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 write a low interest message. I don't know the exact message I wrote to Rene back in the days, um, but yeah, it 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 really depends. And but even if it even if it doesn't work, nobody will ever know, right? Nobody will just imagine you texting like one hundred uh, entrepreneurs that are uh, levels above, and then ninety nine of those respond, but this one guy responds, and you hang out with him. 
and then nobody will know about tonight nine didn't respond to you so it actually really doesn't matter and it's again you know if you just put enough even if you do things very wrong or whatever if you put enough action into one direction you know some some you will either learn or or have success and usually you will have success over time couldn't agree more um so you've you know hung out with some big people like you know you've mentioned some of the names i wanted to ask because on your website you have a picture of you and gary v yeah at dinner could you talk about that interaction um so i mean gary gary v was we we met gary v with um i met gary v with my partner at race your head back at the uh, at the time mm. it was a one of his events and actually um and it was like an entrepreneur dinner afterwards at at four seasons and it was honestly it was really way, amazing it was here in london and you know before we were saying hi how is this dinner going to be you know is it going to be awkward are we actually going to learn something you know is he in real life as he is on social media and honestly it was just like you imagine it, it is right it was just like four hours of like business talk you know everybody was shooting questions at, at gary asking hey i have this bottleneck i have this problem and he was he was you know spitting wisdom back he was helping a lot he was weeding the people he could also see some facets of like you know what what you would call emotional in, in, in uh, interpretations of of you know he he saw things in our partnerships that we didn't tell him but he he could see it um so what what he saw was like you know there's this one guy um that is like the expert that was my my partner and the that, that one guy who's like the technical guy that was me and he says that usually is like you know the best combination that you can have um and he saw that without even mentioning it and yeah it was really it was really uh inspirational and i wish i would be able to host dinners like that i would like love to go to dinners like that every night um just like with other entrepreneurs it's just my favorite topic to talk about um the specific challenges that that you have in your business what you currently want to grow and other people share experience and then sometimes you know some people can reduce your workload by a month or two months because they have a better idea or know something and you don't have to fight through it alone definitely that, that's interesting because uh it should be another reason for you to come to london more often but <laughs> we're actually uh going to be hosting you know high level entrepreneurial dinners uh, other people in several industries and it'll be good to connect and you know mastermind together in a nice setting yeah not necessarily over zoom yeah but, you know outside of zoom and one big thing that you have done throughout you know your time as an entrepreneur is connect with people through nightlife and dinners and it's actually really important to meet with other people outside of a business setting yeah so yeah couldn't agree anymore yeah, I'm, I'm, I'm happy. I'm happy to to come anytime. Yeah, definitely, <laughs> absolutely. Thanks for the invitation. Yes, sir. Um, you were mentioning crab mentality before, so I'd love it if you could oh, kind of expand yeah. on that a bit. Um, so, crab me mentality is the other side of the coin. You know, if your environment is really bad, it can also hold you hold you back quite a lot, and that is something that a lot of people need to learn. And the crab mentality is, you know, if you put like a bunch of crabs into a box. If they would work together and they would work together and they would just jump onto each other, almost like 80% or 90% of the crabs would be able to get out of the box, right? But what actually happens is, you know, the crabs are all going to fight to, to jump out of the box. And whenever one is up there, they're not just denying support. They're actually trying to get them back down. And it's unfortunately also how humans are very often. Um, and especially if you excel out of one context one friend group um most people there's this saying and i don't want to it's it's there's this saying you know people don't want your best they want uh to be the best version for themselves you, they don't want you to be the best version of yourself they want the best version that serves them best and unfortunately this is really really true and and you will have like maybe three friends that are different right if, if you if you're lucky that are really on your side with your personal growth and they have to work on their personal growth and you have to build form this really deep relationship where you're really sure 
that this person has your best interest. But other than that, you should be very well aware that a lot of people don't want you to succeed. I know it sounds very cliche, but it, but it's the reality. And I don't mean it bad. It's just very natural. They want you to be part of the group or stay part of the group. And they're actually afraid. Um, but sometimes the best thing you can do for them is, you know, to just do the thing that is important for you anyways, to just move on. And then when they come back a year later and ask for help, then you give them help. And maybe you're a motivation for somebody else. And you can even think, you know, if you're mad at them, just like I would almost flip, you know, the whole thing and say, yeah, do it for them, you know, show them it's possible, be motivational for them and be a source for them to reach out to when they when they have struggles of their own. Yeah, I actually wanted to add on to that. I really agree with what you said. And it's inevitable as an entrepreneur when you're young yeah. and you're seeing a lot of success in a short period of time whilst the rest of your peers may be in scenarios in which they're not as blessed as you in the context of, you know, making money at a young age. And I've experienced that as well, you know. Not everyone has, like you said, the, their best interest in you because they don't want to see you either get above them. And the biggest, w like, worst feeling is for someone, let's say that's, let's say th at the moment that you meet them, they're above you, but then you yeah. overtake them. Um, just because you're focusing on yourself and you, you're not making it your own personal vendetta to like yeah, no, overtake them. No. You're just focusing on yourself, but they see it like, oh, damn, like he's getting above me. And it's literally like the crab mentality yeah. analogy you made with like when you know, they're at the top of the bucket, they're going to drag you back down to try to keep you below. But. You, you know the song XO to Alive? Oh, yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. It's exactly about that. Yeah. You know, it's Lil Uzi Word yeah. that is like, oh, I cannot hang out with my old friends. Now I'm on the tour with The weekend, you know, XO yeah, to yeah, Alive. Yeah, yeah, and it's yeah. it's exactly about it. So all my friends are there, push me to the edge. Yeah, yeah. Um, it's exactly about that, how you change friend circles when, when, you, when you go up. And also, you should be aware that you cannot really force somebody else to progress or to come to the journey with you like i have i personally never had success with that in my life never those people have to do it on their own and i personally tr don't try to change anyone anymore mm -hmm. if they reach out to me on oh, actually that's that's a lie i i try to <laughs> but <laughs> but i regret it usually so it, it it's yeah. not really it's not really like like you cannot like motivate your friend even your best friend like like hey let's go on a diet blah blah, blah. it usually don't that doesn't work um and honestly, the best thing you can do for them is just to focus and then like just do it and make it seem so natural. And like for some people is, you know, just taking like like even with you guys, you know, the. For me, this is my first podcast recording. I was a little bit nervous, right? You made it seem so natural to me. It's just the most normal thing, you know, where I come from. It's not normal to jump on a podcast to talk about all that stuff, you know, to put yourself out there. You have given me. You know, just by focusing on yourself, you have given helped me to come here, see the supernatural. I after we started talking, I lost my nervousness. I was able to to ho hopefully help a little bit, and um, so and and that's goes through all areas in life. If you just do your thing, you make it a more normal thing instead of uh, I don't know making it a rarity. Yeah, yeah. I honestly, I think that's the the entire host job. Like, to be honest, if I feel like if the host has one thing that they need to do is make sure that the guest is able to provide um, the value to the best of their abilities. I think just to add on that, like, I think it's important to also recognize that there, there are friends for different seasons. There are friends for different reasons as well and friends for different things in life, right? Like, there are friends that you will want to have a good time with and you will yeah. enjoy together and maybe they're like the older friends from back in yeah. the day and they enjoy seeing you in these kinds of situations but yeah. maybe day to day those aren't the guys that you're going to be hanging around because the talks that you have aren't going to be and as long as you're aware of of all these specific categories like like fun friends those are friends that i'm i'm honestly like like most of the entrepreneurs are not that funny like yeah. <laughs> it's just a reality like i have like my, my most funniest friends are not like entrepreneurs right um and so so it's it's nice to have fun friends and sometimes you might you know be super stuck in work and then you're just having a good time with the fun friend you know so that can be very valuable as well so don't go there with a 
judgy way. Oh, oh, you're not an entrepreneur. You're working in corporate or you don't do stuff. Some people are very content and very happy with where they are, very satisfied, and it's perfectly fine. Um, I don't think you should judge anybody on that. And But just be aware that, you know, maybe your fun friends are not the person you should reach out for help to. They might be not, not, not they might be not, there are people that um, can help you greatly in work, but they might not be great friends uh, uh, for other things. They might be too focused on work. So you shouldn't come to them with personal problems, which is fine as well. Uh, so just, yeah, like some, some awareness of your friends and not, you have to have some friends that, that help you grow, that bring you. And um, the only people I would really stay away from is toxic people. Mm -hmm. I think that's the one thing where I would really say, you know, cut it out. Um, just don't give them a platform. And if you can see how it really like, if you look at it from, like if you do your daily journaling or, or vlogging or whatever, and you see like, hey, this person is just really draining my energy, then yeah, then this this is not it. That, 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 that is just like so costly for for your for your personal growth it's it's insane absolutely yeah and very few people are going to be a to z friends right like friends for yeah. everything in life i don't have one i think <laughs> yeah but even then like you know it's important as you said to recognize who's there yeah. for you for what part and, and be able to use that and have those that will come up with you and like yeah. really help you and make new friends for advice. Yeah. exactly yeah Exactly. Yeah, but reality is reality. If if if, if we're fully honest, the reality is if you if you get very successful and we're talking about levels, then you usually what I see other people is doing they they switch their friend circle quite drastically. It just naturally comes, you know. People move to other places. They hang out with other people, you know, Miami, right? Mm -hmm. So I ask, for example, Rene, he's really not having a lot of like like college friends no more, right? Mm -hmm. Like like friends from back in the day. It's not not too much. Um, so that's something that that happens often and, and it's fine for for some people um so yeah whatever whatever makes you feel good so yeah earlier we were speaking about really like productivity dopamine detox and yeah like the steps you've taken especially over the last uh, few mo years and months to help yourself be the most productive optimum um, level. yeah optimal mm -hmm. version of yourself what kind of biohacking tips and tricks would you be able to give to the audience out there so over the years i had my times where i was doing a lot of supplements to help me similar as tim ferris did but then over time you know especially when you travel a lot it can be bothersome to to do all that stuff and honestly a lot of the stuff is not really working anyways so i now really listen to what Uberman is saying in his podcast. And if you don't like his, po I know his podcasts are very long, but there are summaries out there that you can look up. Um, there are, there's also a tool that I can recommend. It's YouTube summarized uh, where you can just click once and it summarizes you the whole YouTube video. So that's also a, a quick thing. And then what I'm currently doing is I said it before, what I'm currently doing, my routine, like I, I just try to do things that are easily done everywhere and don't require supplements that much. I'm, I'm taking creatine, I'm taking uh, magnesium, especially when I'm doing a lot of sport to fall asleep to, uh, when I, before for bed. I'm taking L-theanine, which is basically just drinking a tea and glycine, um, which is the only like, you know, sleeping supplement kind of. Um, I have a bed that cools down my my bed, which I have to say it's it, it's 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 eight sleep. Um, it's nice, but it's not. It's it's very helpful and it's nice to have, but way more important is like that your room is really dark. Like the room has to be pitch black dark. Um, it has to be very cold. Um, I'm also using a weighted blanket. On, like those things are so it, I started with oh I'm not doing that many things anymore <laughs> but now now I'm doing all these things but but that. yeah but you can see how much that is already integrated in my routine that I don't even think about it anymore second nature yeah but I have my, my in, in my home in Frankfurt and it was one of the reasons why I settled down I just wanted to have something where I can make things my own and like my bedroom is just my sleep palace you know there's no there's no TV in there there's um i leave my phone out out of there and i try to when i'm in there i'm just sleeping you know so 
when I wake up, I try to get up as fast as possible. And when I get in there, I try to fall asleep as fast as possible. Um, try to get into the se to bed same time every day. And I didn't think it was possible, but with all those adaptions, I sleep like eight hours a day. I'm very happy about it. I had times where I was just sleeping six hours and I was like feeling, oh, I didn't, I cannot sleep more. I'm just waking up too early. And now I have that sleep and I also like my REM sleep and deep sleep. My bed is measuring that. It's all super like, I'm, I'm so happy with that at the moment. Um, and yeah, one thing is I don't drink, I don't try to drink caffeine 10 hours. That's also from Uberman before going to bed. That really helped as well. Um, so yeah, that was of the thing that sleep is just like, just be, just on the plane here, I was listening to the news, Willpower uh, episode by Uberman, which was again, you know, sleep deprived, less willpower. It's just like the biggest life hack of them all. Um, if you haven't, you sleep sorted. You uh, Even before fixing your like social media routine, it's just like get like eight hours of sleep and then you will have enough willpower to withstand also these, these dopamine triggers, dopamine fryers. Mm -hmm. Absolutely. that's great so we've covered a lot of ground and not just talked about your journey but we talked about business lifestyle and the great things that you've been able to do and to wrap things up i wanted to give you the opportunity to give a message to those who are watching right now maybe they're struggling they're at the beginning of their journey so let's say the julian at the beginning of his entrepreneurial journey what pieces of advice if you could summarize the whole conversation and action steps that people can implement now and they'll be able to find their way on their own journey. Um, I think I would have a nice challenge for them. Uh, it has been popping up recently. There's this like 50 challenge uh, where you basically rec do something productive for, for 50 days and you record yourself. Um, I personally would recommend you do 50 days and each day you do a little vlog instead of writing it down, you just record yourself either on your phone or on your computer and you just rate your own life or what you do that day or what is current in your mind from an eagle eye perspective. That kind of guarantees that you don't get completely lost and that kind of guarantees and it, you don't have to be perfect. Nobody's perfect, but you can then like, oh, today I was just like full on social media and then maybe the next day you say, actually today I was two hours less on social media. Um, I was going to the gym and then make it a habit to to, to keep talking to yourself and see what you did good and what you didn't do good because there's a there can be a big difference of what you want to be and what you actually are and the way to secure that you stay more aligned with what you want to be is to just reflect and one one easy way to do that i found was like check like just doing a vlog every day just and by vlog i just literally mean like a video log which is like two minutes talking one minute talking to the camera yeah, I agree. What can't be tracked, can't be measured, and you won't be able exactly. to see the progress in the long term. And the final thing we wanted to talk about is why are you now committed to growing your personal brand? Like, what is the importance of personal branding to you? Because up until this point, you've been able to do great things as an entrepreneur offline. Why now? Why personal branding now? So when we, when, when we look outside, personal brands are taking over everywhere, you know, uh, Logan Paul and KSI is taking away a lot of market shares of Red Bull. Mr. Beats is taking away market shares from McDonald's and Burger King. And I've also seen a video today, you know, Tim Cook has like 5 million followers more than Apple. Elon Musk has 10 times as many followers as Tesla. And I almost, it almost feels like a necessity. And so that's the one thing. So I just feel like I have to kind of do that. And also the other thing is, which is my personal motivation, I think it just helps me to connect with more like-minded people. Uh, this, 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 this is my main reason. I just want to be out there, uh, connect with people like you, you guys. And um, I sometimes feel a little bit isolated on my path when, when working on those businesses. And I want to, I think I can help those businesses more when I have an even better network of, of other entrepreneurs and when, when facing challenges um, can talk to other people. Mm -hmm. And of course, you know, uh, it, it sounds cliche, but you know, it's also nice to, to give back. And for me, it's still, it's still uh, 
far-fetched to think of people learning from me, you know, taking something. But I assume if some people, I, I mean, I had it before when I was doing some public speaking that people were thanking me afterwards for motivation or for tips. So that has always been a very nice feeling as well. And I hope I can improve on that as well. Amazing. And I just wanted to add on to that because you've been able to impact these people through them attending your events, people meeting you in person, and now you're able to do the same thing, but at scale using leverage. And the leverage in this scenario is media. Yeah. So social media. And, you know, I always tell people that for example, people like you and you that have so much experience, so much value to share to the world, it is very, very selfish of you to not share your story, to not share the value, because you don't know. There's a kid out there yeah. or a 40-year-old guy who's stuck in a job that isn't seeing the light at the end of the tunnel. But if they hear, let's say, a 30-second clip of from your content and they're like, oh, damn, it's like the epiphany moment. Yeah, you I mean that that, that that was also what a little friend told told me. Um, like, you know, you have to get out there, you have to uh, to speak up, you have to share things, and yeah, I'm uh, thanks, I'm happy, thankful, grateful for the opportunity. Get it started. No, and I guarantee you, if someone's listened through the whole way, and they're listening to this now, they have absolutely gotten some value from yeah. from listening in, and I'm sure a lot more to come with the journey you're about to go on exciting time Amazing. ahead and uh, the final final question I wanted to ask is what made you feel comfortable and happy to you know have us as your growth partners in helping you scale your personal brand throughout your entrepreneurial journey I think when I was talking with you it was just like I didn't feel like you would want to hook me up on something it was more like I could share my problems or what I was thinking actually and what was my um, objections actually and you you took them into account and you explained them to me and I just felt I just felt safe with you I could also see you were working with when I could see that I could see the videos you've edited I knew you had the skill so of course I did my due diligence um, and that's why I felt felt you a good partner to 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 run it and you were taking you know for me it was also one thing i was never doing doing personal brand was also it's a lot of work right you know do, do all the editing do fi find editors manage the editors tell them what to do you know and i was always looking for a partner that can you know take that off of me so i can just focus on recording videos telling my stories and then you know also helping me with topic selections and i have somebody that has really knowledge in that in that uh topic so that um they can also you can also help me with topic selections and I'm not just like a person that is going out there and saying what I want to say but it's I'm following what people want to hear right and you give me feedback on that and I you give me feedback on that and it really helps as well so it just feels like I'm I'm responding to questions I'm just serving instead of you know putting myself out there which is not like w w what I want to do definitely I uh, appreciate that. And we're looking very much forward to, you know, helping you grow further with your personal brand and all the other uh, business projects and very happy to have this synergy. So thanks for coming on today, Julian. Uh, any final words from anyone? Absolute pleasure and looking forward to see the next steps you go on to take, my friend. Yeah, it was a pleasure for me as well. Thanks for having me. Amazing. So make sure you check the links in the description. Julian's Instagram is going to be there. Mine and Antonio's Instagram is going to be there. And make sure you check out Julian's stuff that's going my, to be coming out. My YouTube's hopefully there as well. Yes, it's going to be there. It's going <laughs> to be a lot of lot more in-depth uh, value bombs and actionable steps for you guys. So thanks for watching. Make sure you like, comment, subscribe. Stay hydrated, stay motivated, and stay blessed. Deuces.